on the color wheel are colors that are spaced equally away from each other. You can see um, on the color wheel, for instance, yellow, blue, and red are one of our triads. They also are their primary colors. Another triad is orange, green, and violet. See how they're equally spaced away from each other? The idea with these colors is that they're not really analogous, so they're not all that similar. Um, uh, the idea is that they hold their own power visually. Uh, sometimes you're in a situation, like the situation with split complementary was, I want to limit my colors, I want it dynamic, but I want it to look more colorful. With a color triad, I have three things, and I want them to be equally powerful visually. For instance, uh, I've been hired to do a car ad, and then they, they want me to, um, you know, each car to look important. So I could look over here at my triad. Well, how about I use yellow, red, and blue? I'll make the kind of sport car red. I'll make the um, the little convertible yellow, and I'll make a minivan blue. They're all going to look equally important in the advertisement. So this is how you would actually see them solve problems this way. This one is not so much used with interior design because of the they don't harmonize as well. Uh, but it is used a lot with advertising and paintings when you're up to certain things. Some examples of things students have done in the past. Um, this is not what we're going to do, but here's the three primary colors. You can see each one of these butterflies is visually the same. They're holding their own power visually. And then we're going to put in a neutral background. To get a neutral, just mix the colors together. You're going to get what we call a brown. And it may not be a beautiful brown, but it's going to be a, a neutral color. Neither one of the colors is favored. Here's another one of the, the triads. This one would be yellow, orange, red, violet. You can see blue, green. Each one of these bugs is holding um, its own visually. This one's slightly darker, so maybe not standing out as much. And then the neutral background. Again, here's another sa student sample. You can see the three primary colors all holding their own weight visually. Uh, at some point, we moved to doing vegetables. So here's an example again. This one would be red, orange, yellow, green, and blue, violet, all holding their own visually with a neutral type of a background. In the past, we did like a lot of, if you were here in class, we would get out the temper paint and we would use um, the same photograph as a reference and we would use the palette knife and practice using a lot of texture. So this is a more recent use of a color triad. See how the colors, they all hold their own visually and the neutral background and how it works for an interesting composition for certain uses. This isn't something that's unnecessarily calming. Uh, it's just, you need to say something very specifically. I wanted to show you some mistakes. You can see here in this one, they didn't put a neutral background in. They used one of their colors and see how the violet, of course, is favored too much. So we're not getting the same effect visually. Here in this sample, instead of using the three colors and neutral background, they made one of the, um, I guess it's an apple brown. And so now um, the orange is too strong. It kind of doesn't make sense. It's not the same power visually. Here's one where the person, just the size of the things is out of base. There's two reds. And anyway, it's, it's not put together the right way to take advantage of a colored triad. So it's not working as strong as some of the others. We're going to get our painting started today. We're all going to use this three, same three colors on this painting. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull them out. If you remember, this is going to be our subject matter. We're just going to imagine that the grapes are violet instead of red violet. So out of your color tray, pop out. They're all lined up here together with your base, basic colors. You have your red, orange, and so on. Pop out your regular violet, your regular green, and your regular orange. And we're just going to use those three colors to paint with. Uh, you can go ahead and um, paint in on the color wheel um, those three colors. So my, I'm going to get them a little bit soft. Some water. Um, I'm doing, why did I do that? Anyway, here's my violet. I'll have to clean out my green. Here's my, and we're all we're all using the same three colors, so no no worrying about guessing on this one. Um, see how I wiped out the just with a wet paper towel, I wiped out the color. If you're, one of your colors, especially your yellow, is is dirty, just get a wet paper towel and wipe it out. 
here's my green, and then here's my orange. So here's my three colors from my tryout. Triad. When you send the um, the painting into me, let's pretend this is your painting. Just put it side by side like this in one photograph. I don't need to have a photograph of just that. Just side by side. It's wonderful. Now we're going to take our print out and do a drawing um, of, of this nice and big on the page. No reason to draw it tiny in the middle. That wouldn't be as good a composition. So to start off with a drawing, I would probably, um, you know, about the right size and about the right location. So something like that here, my grapes here, my carrots here, and then I might want to zigzag my background. It's a little bit zigzag anyway, but I would probably zigzag it more. So then I would start off with abouts, and then I can go back in and draw more specifically. Um, so here on the other side of the paper, I didn't want you to have to watch me do the whole drawing, but I started the drawing like that. And I went ahead this time around and I drew it in a vertical um, situation because why not? And then I have, I kind of have three vertical bands instead of the zigzag going in this particular setup. So uh, it took me about 10 minutes and um, the background doesn't have to be very specific, but certain things like the grapes and the carrots it would be nice if they were specific. As far as today, we're going to do the drawing. So if I were you, I'd turn it off at this point and, and make your drawing, then turn the video on again. We're going to do the drawing, and then we're going to paint the background. And that's all we're doing in class for today. So turn off the video for a minute if you're ready. So I'm looking at this for a reference, but I'm not necessarily going to paint the background exactly how it shows me because um, I'm an artist and I get to make choices, right? So here's my three colors I have to work with. My background's going to be some blend of the three of them. Uh, what I'm probably going to do is, um, so it goes across here. See, I've got the paper dirty right there. That doesn't matter. By the time you're done with the watercolor painting, um, there's a whole lot going on. Um, what I'll probably do is, I'm, I'm looking at this, do I want this lighter and these darker? No, because I think they'll look too polka dyed. So I'll make this a little darker and these two sections a little lighter. I might even have this one, leave and leave this one wide up here. I think that would be nice. So what I think I'm going to do is, in my case, you can choose what you want to do for your drawing. I'm just painting in the background now. I'm putting down a lot of water because it's going to be a wash. And how you do your background is kind of up to you. Uh, somebody asked me how do I do some of the things I do. When I'm, when I'm using watercolors, I, don't, I have a general plan, but my plan is also to kind of let it kind of happen. When something pretty starts happening with the water all kind of dissolving with the paint and it looks kind of cool, I just let it happen. So I'm setting up a situation where hopefully some of those things will happen in my in my painting here. So it has to be neutral. So I'm going to mix. I got it wet. I can always get it wet again. I'm going to mix my three colors together. Probably, um, yeah, violet's going to be the strongest. Um, and then um, that's a nice gray. But I need to want to make sure I have all three. So here's a nice kind of grayish brownish look. I want to, like I said, a little darker in the front of the painting um, uh, to um, kind of move us back. This is my plan. At least that's my plan right now. So I'm putting in some um, different areas with this brown. I'm probably going to make some other variations of my brown and, and work it up the, up the drawing. So I did want to get slowly lighter and lighter as I went up. So here in the upper part of the background, just kind of really light is my is my idea. And then I thought I'd leave just that upper corner all the way white. So kind of up to you how things compositionally after you get your drawing in, where, where you think you need some help and then let the material do that for you and then where you want to add some stronger colors. So now I'm going to make another brown. I'm sure it'll look a little different. Um, maybe not quite as much of the green this time, for instance. So here's a slightly different color 
it's still a nice neutral and I'm trying to paint um, kind of in a direction that I want my movement to go. See how the carrots are stopping you down here? So I need to get some movement up the page that doesn't just stop. So repeating my colors and letting them blend together up here on the painting. I'm painting in some negative shapes around the carrots and then I'm working my colors up the painting. Also when we paint this particular painting I thought it'd be fun to kind of paint and let our brush strokes show a little bit. It's going to be kind of realistic and maybe a little bit like an impressionist painting in that we can, um, it'll be expressive and we'll let things kind of stand out. Um, letting a few brush strokes show is often interesting in one of these paintings, so I'm trying to infer some details that I'm not actually even painting in. And I'm trying, I'm trying to get it a little darker on the bottom and slowly get lighter. And then the other thing is I don't want it too interesting because I want to, um, this, this also in neutral is going to be a little bit less violet in this one. I want, um, I obviously want my center of interest to be a little bit more interesting. So here's, I'm coming in a third time um, with some, another color that's a little bit more warm looking and I'm just just to have some nice variety to how I painted it there's some negative space I haven't gone into yet remember the space between things it's not always a background it's a could be a negative space some of my paper is starting to dry a little bit and and I'm okay sometimes I add more water when that happens and sometimes this particular painting I think we'll try and keep it a little bit loose and go ahead and let some brush strokes show and this is as if it's like a fold there we go a fold in the um, actual material so working in some ideas working in a little bit dark around some of these little nooks and crannies around my subject matter and then working my brush strokes kind of going in a direction like this so I get some movement going even though when the painting is the painting is not all about the background right but the background will support the structure or how i've set the painting up so i'm almost done i don't want it too dark either um I'm trying to want my my um my different pieces of fruit to be able to stand out and contrast so I, i'm going to stop my background here so you don't have to do this, but I left a little piece of this white. You can see in the photograph it's actually darker. I'm trying to work with it lighter. I'll probably erase off where it says 10 minutes. I have my three colors. We're only using these three colors. That's why we pulled them out. And then I'm mixing them together to make brown so it'll be neutral. And then when I add my other colors tomorrow, uh, then it'll have a, um, it'll, it won't favor one of them, but it'll support them. So um, that's, the, um, that's the video for right now, and I'll talk to you guys again uh, tomorrow. We'll finish the painting.